Hello, everyone. I'm Justin Witz, co-founder and CEO of Catapult and Catapult Streamlines, the request for proposal workflow. Or we like to call it request for X, request for information, qualification, proposal, due diligence questionnaire, security questionnaire, all the wonderful things that exist in procurement, we streamline within Catapult, which is why we say RFX. And companies that do these look for solutions that cater to four things for them. One is being a creator, someone who can actually create and request something, someone who's responding, actually going through that process. The second piece is empowering teams, giving something that's going to allow you to track progress, be able to collaborate with one another in real time. Third, industry agnostic. So when you think about building out an RFX opportunity, you could be civil engineering, so do you want it to just focus on civil engineering, or are you more like an Amazon that's doing many different verticals and different types, being able to funnel those into a single solution? Lastly, skill sharpening. Is this going to reduce human error? Is it going to allow you to handle more opportunities? The more opportunities you handle, the bigger your win ratio can be. That's the only way around it. Otherwise, he isn't more efficient, which will reduce the amount of time and cost it takes slide here. There we go. So there's a lot of great data on this slide right now. I'm not going to cover all of it, but you can see the old waves of things being done, what the market's trying to do right now, and where we come in. So we really focus on building out teams and collaboration, version control within a single platform, everyone working cohesively throughout the process, I implementing automation to save time, reduce that human error, analytics for great all-hands meetings, scrum status calls, even identifying bottlenecks to get to done faster, and security beyond SSL certificates. We're talking end-to-end -end encryption. There's a lot of great data coming into here. Data at rest, data in transit, all needs to be a big play. So we are focused on the financial services market. We have government, healthcare, real estate, entertainment already on our platform. But one of the nice things about the financial service market isn't the 3.25 billion target size. It's the 130,000 regulated companies that have to do RFPs throughout the year. So of those 130,000, we're targeting 2,600 by the end of next year and 260 paid on our platform by the end of this year. And so how we're doing that is through a case study that's presented on the screen right now. This is with an insurance company, Fortune 250. They do about 1,700 of these a year. They increase it by 400 per year. This year alone, they'll do about 2,500. And it takes them 10 hours to respond to 90% of, of an RFX opportunity. Uh, so the way this works is they have a client request, which is on that far left side. They submit an intake form to the company. The company then assigns it to a writer who collaborates with their content team and their subject matter experts, compiling from past projects, copying and pasting into a new opportunity. It goes through compliance. They give it their wonderful stamp of approval. And then guess what? It goes back to the writer, and that's repeated every single three months. Very laborious, very time consuming. Within Catapult, we built out project boards, which everyone has access to. So clients can land on a self-branded portal that they can sign up as a new client, create a project. They can sign in, view progress, download reports, even view open uh, projects. So if you've ever seen the movie War Dogs with Jonah Hill, great example of government side. Once it comes into Catapult, it immediately gets assigned to the appropriate individuals on the team based on permissions and user roles and capacity. From there, it then trickulates down to the content team and compliance, limiting uh, automation to help drive that progress forward. So that 10 hours at 90% that this insurance company was doing was reduced on our platform to one to two hours, 98%. In addition to that, we did a survey on all of our clients that are on the platform so far. We found that we've saved over 78% of the time it takes to respond. And those creating, picking vendors to evaluate, and, and actually winning with that process, we've cut that time in half. So we've had great significant traction over the past two years following this model. We've had over 630 unique organizations on our platform. Over 975 projects have been created. Over 500 just in the last quarter alone and 5,000 questions and answers provided. That's a lot of data. Think of the case studies, the white papers, industry-specific white papers, the AI that can be built and driven to automate templates in responses from scratch. So let me swing through here. Uh, so we are one platform with multiple applications. Several of the key ways that we are winning clients beyond what I mentioned earlier is branding and customization. No company wants to switch to a solution that only caters to 50 to 60% of what they need. If that happens, they're going to start looking for another solution. So we're winning a lot of clients that way. We have automation that's driving results, streamlining the process, saving them time, which is cost, uh, implementing team collaboration features in real time, and handling any type of project. 
So my team is comprised of myself, along with Chelsea and David. Amongst the three of us, we have over 50 years of industry experience, all working with the Fortune 250 throughout our entire careers. Some of us are experts. Uh, we're all published authors and writers. I myself am also an Air Force and Iraqi war veteran. Alongside us is our innovative team of developers that are helping spearhead the development of our product. And we are asking for $3 million to secure 260 companies by the end of this year. Uh, we are SaaS-based products charging an annual base fee. And I look forward to answering any questions you guys may have. Well, I can see you did a really good job hitting the time because you didn't want Garth to, to say anything to you. So <laughs> well, that and I saw Juan was practicing his roundhouse kicks. Yeah. So. <laughs> uh, you've got great energy when you present, right? So that charisma, letting that show through is very, very good. Um, I do feel like once you got into it a little bit, you were probably speaking a little bit too fast, mm -hmm. covering a lot of detail. So one thing in a five-minute pitch, maybe you want to pull out Hey, here's an example of, I know you do 401k RFPs, maybe just a, a high level example that would kind of grab the crowd and then you can dive in a little deeper. Understood. I, let's see, the second slide you did a good job of really hitting it. Like there's kind of two ways you can get an ROI and your ROI and you hammered it home a lot, which is fantastic is the time savings, right? And mm -hmm. so uh, I thought you did a good job of Leading with that, I'll echo again, keep, keep putting the team earlier if you can. I mean, if, if, if it makes sense and it fits in your flow, just, um, and I like what Garth said last time, kind of the, the, the why, you know, talking about the why, like there are a lot of competitors. If you search for RFP software, there mm -hmm. are a lot of competitors. You did a good job of explaining kind of how, how you guys fit, but there are a lot of competitors out there, so one, why are you trying to compete in this market? Maybe try to, mm -hmm. I don't know, maybe there's a story or talking to kind of the why you could be doing a lot of things. And then I, again, maybe you take an extra 15 seconds and talk about how you guys are super, super unique or maybe there's a niche or maybe there's a target type of sector you guys are uh, trying to kind of focus on mm -hmm. with all those competitors. Does that make sense? Yes, yes it does, thank you. Hey, Justin. Um, yeah, I want to echo the, you know, good energy. I love how you, how you entered the stage. Uh, I, I'm always struck by that. I, you know, I'm like, yeah, I want to hear what this guy's going to say. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, you know, it's like you got, you got through on the time on a technicality, and that is you, you had four times as many words, uh, <laughs> which is, I was with you, you know, um, I, I, you, you got to slow it down a little bit. Um, I think I might have missed sort of exactly how you make money. Do you charge a fee to the, well, could you no, tell me how you make money? Yeah, you, just great. Um, I actually said it very quickly at the end. It was as if it was one word. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so we are, uh, so, so we charge an annual base subscription fee. Okay. It's great. Uh, <laughs> 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 um, I do like how you hit you, you did it fast, but you, you did hit, you know, who we are, mm -hmm. you know, what we're asking for. You know, uh, sometimes it, it's so major and sometimes, you know, people miss that. You know, it's a, um, you know, with, for the target market, you know, throw up a big number and then move on. I'm like, you know, I, I love that you're like you're fairly exact. You know, like we want 260 and this is what, you know, this is the amount of money and this is what we're going to turn it into. I, I, I do like that. I, you know, even maybe one more number around, you know, exactly how that happens. But uh, uh, that, that is good, you know, to develop that. Good. Thank you. You probably have NDAs with the companies that you work with, but could you talk about any specifics of who's paying you money right now? Um, so we have a lot of RIAs that are on our platform paying us. There's some of our strategic partners as well, which is why we've been able to break through a lot of the bigger box companies. We have over 30 in the Fortune 500 that are on us and around 180 in the Fortune 1000. Um, Vanguard would probably be one of the most notable ones that's on and using from that perspective. Um, so yeah, but more so RIA side. I, I would think if you could talk about some of those names, I mean, that's great, uh, 180 of the Fortune 1000 if you could draw out some of those names, because that kind of gives you some credibility mm -hmm. without having to explain it. 
Well, I, I flipped through that slide really quick because I was like, oh, five minutes. This isn't easy, guys. Um, but there were some listed on there that I, that I have comfort with with sharing. Um, yeah. But yeah, it was too quick. Cool. I, I actually noticed that, and I, I like that. You know, being able to pivot, you're like, OK, I don't have time to. Or maybe you're sensing your audience, and you're like, I don't want to go into that. Like, I'm totally fine with. Uh, with zipping by a couple of slides because you're not up there to go through all your slides. You're up there to get to the next meeting, you know, to get enough heads nodding that you're that you can go back and uh, you know. So I, I did actually like that. Oh, perfect. Thank you. How do you think you did? What would you do differently? Oof. What would I do differently? I probably wouldn't wear red pants like the other guy. So <laughs> we'd all be unique and different. Um, <laughs> I probably would have cleaned the deck up a little bit and hit harder on how we're actually making the sales. I think would be a real big focus point. And then the second would be actually um, being more direct on a use case with an actual client name. So that I think that resonates a little more and stronger. Mm -hmm. um, that'd probably be the two or three changes I'd make. Since a lot of people are here to learn, what advice do you have for people that are giving pitches? Because you've been doing this now for a year and a half. Yes. And I'm sure your pitch has evolved, so maybe some tips. <sighs> the shower is your best friend. Uh, no, I'm kidding. Um, have, <laughs> have great mentors. Um, have people that you can rely on that you can run it through. Um, that always helps hone it in a little bit and bring it home. Um, that's probably one of the biggest things I'd focus on. And then joining an accelerator like QC FinTech um, that goes beyond just pitch practice and obviously one with pitch breakfast. Um, great examples of having to, to kind of build that and hone it in. Does your pitch now look anything like your first pitch? God, no. No, this is completely different. I mean, we've probably done seven iterations, um, and this one has a complete design transformation. What other feedback do you get, or pushback, I should say, from, from investors or from customers? What, what, um, what more from customers than investors. The biggest ones we get are, who are you? Mm -hmm. You know, go through a security process, and that's really easy, because then I just call two of my buddies that run and manage over $80 billion in retirement plan assets, and I say, please send an RFP over to them so they know who I am and I get passed right through. Um, that's pretty much the biggest pushback is who are you now at this point with over 630 of them. Um, we're recognized at this point in the retirement plan space that we don't run into that. It's really now, what are you gonna do next? And then can you build this? Can you give me this? I do it this way, can you accommodate that? And those are the biggest ones now. Yeah, that's great. So, um, and the last thing I'll say too is uh, being military, obviously, I've got a lot of experience working with NASA, Boeing, Lockheed Martin. So a lot of that helps with that custom development side of things and building things out from billion dollar project experience. So I think that, that also gives me a little strength on that side. I'd get that point out. A little early, harder? Early, yeah. too. You know, going back to, it was feedback for the other, you know, it's, it, it, so much of this is, uh, who, who is it? Who, who? And, uh, and I feel like all entrepreneurs are so focused on their idea. Mm -hmm. You know, and it's like not to denigrate your idea, but most people, before I give anybody money, it's like if I could only have one question answered, it would be who. Right. <laughs> and, uh, you know, then get to the what and the why and the market and the things like that. But uh, I think that helps nail the who, you know, mm -hmm. veteran used to dealing with government agencies, you know, just next. You Done. Know, it's, Done. Uh, it's, it's good. But uh, yeah, all in all. And the, the energy is really good. Thank you. Just watch the speed. <laughs> <laughs> Will do. All right, if there's nothing else from the panel, thank you all for your I think time. That's it. Yeah. Thanks, Justin. Justin.